3.6 billion passengers use commercial flights every year. But getting from A to B can be quite a challenge. In this series, we'll witness the bizarre. I was thinking, what is going on? The bust-ups. As soon as he got within arm's reach of him, all hell broke loose. And on board terror. I just wanted to get out. All captured on camera <laughs> by travellers around the world. From check-in to the cabin. We'll watch the drama unfold. We didn't know if we were going to live or die. As passengers go crazy on a plane. Pretty crazy. This time, one passenger refuses to leave his seat. While other passengers can't board their flight. You close the flight before I get inside. And a young boy gets a going over by security. My son was handled inappropriately. This is the moment. Police officers in Miami come up against a man refusing to leave a plane. They have to taser him once. Twice. Ten times. Three big, burly police officers couldn't get him out. American airline flight 2446 is scheduled to fly from Miami to Chicago, a journey that takes over three hours. Jabaria Ennis is on board. He's been in town for business and is returning home. I saw all the other passengers boarding, getting in the groove to settle down for the long flight. And that's when I started hearing other conversations happening near the front of the plane. One of the passengers started talking to a couple that was directly in front of him, trying to engage with the female. He actually physically touched her. The couple complain, and as the flight is still at the gate, the crew decide to reseat the man further down the cabin. And that's when things kind of got crazy. Also on the flight is Adisak Pochanayan. I was on vacation with my sister, and this was our flight home to Chicago. Once the disruptive passenger has been reseated, Adisak finds himself sitting only a few feet from the man. He now has front row seats for the incident about to unfold. It seemed like the situation had been resolved, but the manager was a minority, and the guy they receded shouted something very offensive. He said, my people were here building civilizations while you guys were still swinging from trees. Once he said that, I was like, okay, I'm out of here. I was a little bit anxious because I realized he was deliberately trying to escalate the situation. Faced with a disruptive and abusive passenger, the flight crew decide that the man will not fly on this plane today. They explain their position and ask the man to leave the plane. No, you asked me to move, I okay. moved. Okay. So now you're telling me I'm, that because I've moved, no. you're No, no, no. Got, got that a bit. He refuses. So the police were called in, and then the captain made an announcement. We have the Miami Dade police here. Uh, their policy is before uh, they remove somebody from an airplane, that uh, everybody has to get off the airplane. Oh, yeah. uh, some passengers turn their frustration towards the disruptive man. Everybody was in unison trying to get this guy off the plane. Yeah, we're all going to Unity. As passenger frustration grows, the police decide to board the plane before everyone has disembarked. They came on the plane and tried to manually wrestle this guy out of the seat. Get the fuck off the plane. But the disruptive passenger doesn't want to leave. As people watch on, officers struggle with the man. He fought back 
fairly vehemently. Not only is he resisting arrest, the man is giving a running commentary whilst demanding to know why he is being removed. The police have two good reasons for the arrest. This guy, he couldn't have been more than 150 pounds soaking wet, but he was able to hold his ground. Three big, burly police officers couldn't get him out. The man then starts to taunt officers. The arrest is becoming more difficult and the man more uncooperative. Officers have had enough. A stun gun shot is often painful, but it should subdue the target. At that point, I was getting kind of scared because a taser is basically a weapon. But the man shows no fear and no signs of relenting. He basically egged the officer on. The officer fires. But the shot seems to have no effect. The man even appears to reach for the officer's stun gun. Okay, you think you got him? You think? Even though he's being hit with this electronic stun gun, he's talking back normally. So I'm asking you now. He's still fighting and struggling. The first shot has failed. The man isn't giving up. As passengers watch on, the situation is about to get even more worrying and bizarre. It used to be that what happened on a flight stayed on a flight, but mobile phones put pay to that. So we've asked travel vloggers, pilots, former cabin crew and security experts to take a closer look at flights, fights and airport antics caught on camera. Catching a flight can be a stressful experience, but some passengers let their frustrations boil over. At Stansted Airport in the UK, the gate has been closed for the flight to Athens. This girl must have missed her boarding, and so she lashes out. <laughs> She gives the lady at the gate a good old slap. It's so hard. The woman's actually holding her face. It's really loud. You can really hear that slap hit. Whoa. This is an incredibly shocking thing to see, to see somebody slap somebody else when, in fact, it was certainly her fault. But then she almost looks like she's a bit shocked that she did it, and she steps back. Maybe just mulling over the fact that she's just assaulted this poor woman in the airport who's just trying to do her job. It is frustrating to see that the plane is there and that you could get on it, but there's just no excuse to slap somebody. The lady was cautioned by police and removed from the airport. A flight has landed at Denver International Airport, but there's a delay getting to the gate. Two passengers are angry and demanding to be the first off. You see a woman that's yelling at other passengers and cursing, saying that she wants to get off the plane. That's all she was screaming was, take me off the plane, get me off the plane. I would have removed her immediately. She's saying, you all want to get off. So she thinks that they should be siding with her against the crew or the airline to let them off. This is all indicative of frustration on her behalf. Fuck you! Fuck you! Take this kind of behavior tends to happen when you have very long ground delays. Bring it, fucking piece of shit, bitch! What my experience told me is that as long as you keep passengers informed, the passengers tend to stay calm. 
But if you don't say anything, it will take only 20 minutes or so before complete mayhem erupts. It has escalated to a point where there's also another passenger that is standing in the front galley. Having a passenger standing in the galley and being aggressive is not something that we take lightly because that is where the cockpit door is. Sir, I need you to sit down right now. I am. Sit down, sir. Like, oh, what are you gonna do, shoot me? As soon as you hear that, that's kind of a wrap. <laughs> You're gonna be gone. It's scary for everybody. It's not anything that you wanna hear on an aircraft. As a pilot, we worry about our crew in the back handling passengers like this, especially a passenger that's large and aggressive. The protocol is that we are not to open the cockpit door under any circumstance in the air, and especially post 9-11. We take these things a lot more seriously. Yeah. This is traumatic. I wouldn't want to be on that plane as a passenger. I'm sure the other people were frightened. That's not cool. They got what they wanted and were escorted off the plane first by Denver police. Burbank, California. A flight has only recently landed. We've got a full-blown fight taking place here. They are really going for each other. What is wrong with you? Get out! Other passengers are getting involved, and the cabin attendant is yelling for them to stop fighting. Stop it! It's actually frightening for everybody that's looking on, and dangerous for everybody that's looking on. One guy manages to get the other guy down on a seat. He's sort of laying down and he really starts pummeling him. He's seeing red and he's completely lost control. One of the girls in there is trying to break it up and what happens to her is she falls down below the people who are fighting and is probably hurt in the process. She must be underneath the other guy. <laughs> You've got this one woman who's screaming, telling him to get off. It looks like the people around there want to try and help, but also you don't want to get caught up. If anything like this happens, just stay clear of the scene and wait for trained personnel like the police to come and break it up. You can get hurt if this happens. Disruptive passengers and occasions like this happen on all airlines, but for it to actually go into this level of fighting is very rare. But in my 16 years of being a commercial pilot, I've never seen something like this. One man was arrested and pled guilty to misdemeanor battery. He was sentenced to jail and three years probation. Welcome to Los Angeles. I hope you enjoy your stay. Uh, listen to the advisements. I'll get you on your way. Check your shirt and pants. Avoid the pat down dance. Your Every passenger has to go through security before boarding a flight. Former student, give me a pat down. Even the rich and famous like Ben Affleck. The film star had a thorough examination at LA airport that lasted 53 seconds. But this is the moment a child of just 13 years is subjected to a security search lasting over two minutes. Aaron Williamson and his mother Jennifer are heading east on a special holiday. We were going to go to San Diego and a couple of theme parks. I was really excited for it. Aaron and I travel frequently, but I've honestly never had the kind of trouble we did that day. Jennifer knows that a smooth ride through security is crucial for Aaron's well-being. Aaron has sensory processing disorder. It's a heightened sense of their senses. I'm sensitive to loud noises and touch. It makes it where I have hives, I start getting hot, I start getting stressed out. But the family have planned ahead. We'd done the TSA things where you tell them in advance what you were dealing with. With preparations in place, Jennifer is hopeful. We had a laptop in one of the bags and they asked us to take the laptop out, took the laptop out, went through the scanner, everything passed just fine. And then Aaron went through. Aaron did not set off with the metal detector at all. But at that point, they asked to pat him down. I was really polite and respectful, trying to explain to them Aaron's situation. I asked them, is there any alternative screening? I was told, absolutely not. If you want to be the one to ruin your kid's vacation, fine. We'll get the Dallas-Fort Worth police over and escort you out of the airport. 
I felt like if I didn't go through the pat down at that point, I wouldn't even be able to go to my trip. I said, okay, well, can we please talk to a supervisor? I was told no. And at that point, I thought, well, maybe I'll pull my phone out and send it to the TSA over the Dallas airport and let them see what's going on. And that this young kid who had shorts and a thin T-shirt on was being subjected to this in front of everyone. I was devastated. I didn't feel like I could properly protect him. The body pat-down starts on the 13-year-old with sensory processing disorder. I felt very, very uncomfortable for all of it. The times that that agent is touching Aaron, it's 10 times worse for him than it would be for anybody else. As a parent, I felt completely helpless, and that was the hardest part. I had these people in authority that were telling me, you have to do this with your kid or else. And yet, I'm sitting here watching my child, and I can tell that he's going through hell. A lot of people have seen the video and said that he looks fine, he looks calm. My son is a very kind-natured child who understands authority. So yes, he's going to stand there and allow them to do what is needed to be done. But that doesn't mean that he didn't have problems with it or that he didn't suffer for the remainder of the day and beyond. The careful and thorough search of Aaron is coming to an end. Also, everyone thinks. The supervisor is behind him telling him, go again. I felt he went over certain areas just because his supervisor was there and kept telling him, you got to do it in a certain way. I feel like, to a degree, my son was handled inappropriately. It lasts for more than two minutes. But the ordeal for the family is not over. And they went through every single one of our bags. Things that had passed the screener just fine, they pulled out anyway. We missed our flight, and we waited about three or four hours afterwards to go to the next flight. Throughout the rest of the day, Aaron continued to talk about it. What happened? Why did this occur? At the time, though, I did feel like it was my fault, and I never even got told what I did wrong. Feeling upset and angry, Jennifer shares her video online. By that evening, after I'd gone to bed, I woke up to calls from reporters all over the nation, all over the world. The clip went viral. I think there's been some benefits to it going viral. There's been a conversation about sensory processing disorder. There's been some changes with TSA in terms of how they approach SPD. In addition to that, I think Aaron's gotten a lot of support. He knows that this wasn't his fault now. And there's a lot of people out there all over the world who have, who have kind of backed him up. On every plane, there's always one person you can turn to. When they first appeared, they were recruited from the nursing profession, and the concept behind their role remains safety. The selection process remains intense and rigorous. They are still the angels of the skies, on hand to serve, help, and guide. But the cabin crew role, the passengers, and the problems have all changed, and the job is not what it was. So we've opened our confessional cabin and invited crew in to open up about the reality of flying. Oh, and some of their identities have been hidden to protect the innocent. Some say the biggest attraction to becoming cabin crew isn't serving the passengers. It isn't the crazy parties. It isn't the pay. It's the opportunity to see the world. I loved the travel. I loved the experience of seeing different countries. And all those years ago, we used to have 10 days in Barbados or seven days in St. Lucia. It was amazing. I loved Bangkok because most crew love Bangkok itself. You didn't mind that you were busy or that you were dealing with whatever. And you tend to find that on those flights, they'd be the most fun if you saw a gel bag on your roster you knew you were going to have fun and you were not going to bring any money home. There was always room parties, there was always lots of drinking. The hotel staff probably complained about us a lot. <laughs> oh, 
In Miami, a passenger has refused to leave a plane bound for Chicago. Police officers have been called. They attempted to manhandle the disruptive passenger off. But he's a slippery customer. So they've resorted to using a stun gun to subdue the man. Come on, you're like a little baby. But the first shot has failed to have any effect. What ended up transpiring did involve quite a bit of force, but I don't think it was excess force because the man had many opportunities to leave peacefully. As the man continues to struggle, police keep firing off their stun gun in the hope it will eventually subdue him. They were trying to taser him in different body parts multiple times. After all, I was worried for him because they were tasing him so much, I didn't know how he would end up, you know? It was kind of scary. The shots continue to have little effect. I heard later that the exact number of times they tasered him was 10 times. It doesn't seem to be having much effect on him. After a long struggle, officers finally get their cuffs on the man. Officials then set about clearing the cabin of passengers through the front set of plane doors. But Adisak and all the passengers sat behind the incident have no way of leaving the plane. So he keeps on filming. To actually get him out of the seat, they had to have a third big officer kind of jump behind him and push him out of the seat while the other two were pulling. Then they basically just picked him up and carried him horizontally off the plane. I've never seen anything like that. I got it. They carry his ass off. Crazy. There's 900 pounds of muscle carrying this 150 pound guy off the plane. Not that anyone seems too concerned. Thank you. People started clapping. Everybody was really, really glad that the police had gotten him off the plane. But the disruptive passenger is still making life difficult for the police. Even when they tried to put him on the cart to drag him away from the gate, he was still resisting sitting down. They ended up folding him into this pretzel. Everybody was clapping and saying, yeah, get him out of here. The whole incident delayed our flight by just over an hour. I think the passengers did have a little bit of a bond. It kind of broke the ice for people, and also nobody else wanted to be kind of the jerk on the plane. According to the police, the man's bad behavior continued when he tried to kick out the window in the police cruiser. He was charged with a range of offenses, including battery, disorderly conduct, and resisting an officer. He's awaiting trial. Across the world every day, millions of people jump on a flight. The cost of a plane ticket has more than halved since 1970. Low-cost airlines have made it even cheaper and opened up the skies to everyone. But there was a time when flying was a rare luxury. When getting on a plane was the pursuit of only the wealthy or businessmen. When planes had proper tables and the food was served silver service. And there's one British man who remembers that time well. Fred Finn has flown the most supersonic passenger journeys ever and over 13 million commercial flight miles. As one of the most experienced travelers on the planet, I'm often asked at the pub on a flight, what is the scariest moments you've had in the sky? I come in into Buenos Aires, Apparently, the wheels, the hydraulics didn't work, so they have to hope they'll come down on their own by force of gravity. They didn't. So we came in and landed on the belly. It's a, it's a bit scary and a bit noisy, and things drop off the aircraft and balls of flames occur. Never mind, I got off it and had a, a stiff drink. And like every organized OAP, Fred's got a unique tip on how to stop your ears from popping. Some people say chewing gum is OK. Not for me. I use a hot towel. This equalizes the pressure. Make your descent comfortable, and you'll be able to hear what you say, because if your eardrums are blocked, you can't hear very well. 
Next, a boyfriend decides to organise the surprise of a lifetime in a bid to impress his girlfriend. It was literally full on, wow, what, what just happened? Today, we're going to go Disneyland. Elena and her boyfriend Kiri have been together nine months when they decide to take a romantic break to Paris. Paris was Man and Kira's first holiday together, so it was really exciting. We went to Disney, we went to Moulin Rouge, and we went and watched the European Cup on a massive TV screen in Paris. So Elena just saw the highlight of the goal and thought that they scored again. We were together and just doing random stuff. Wow. It was just perfect. And she's a wow. <laughs> but during the trip, Kiri has other things on his mind. For four months, this old romantic has been planning to pop the question in a very elaborate manner. It was a fun four months. I lied a little bit, but you have to lie to get some good things done in life anyway. There was so many places that we went in Paris that I was thinking, wow, this would have been a great place to do it. And then I'd be like, stop thinking about that. She might read your mind or something. Okay, there she is. Kiri was completely himself throughout the whole Paris trip. But surprisingly, he isn't planning on using Paris, the city of love, and considered one of the most romantic places on Earth as his backdrop. A lot of people did stay. Oh, you're going to Paris, the place of love. Kiri has another place in mind, Leeds Bradford Airport. The idea was definitely because of watching so many movies from Hollywood. But this isn't Hollywood. This is West Yorkshire. It was very difficult. The times that I had to go to the airport, I was telling her I was going to the gym. <laughs> Kiri's plans for his proposal involve using the airport as a backdrop. I had to go there a couple of mornings uh, to sign some paperwork and documents. He then recruits a flash mob dance troupe. Eleanor's sister is involved with a local dance college and they wanted to do it, but I gave them the idea of what to do at the end. And finally, just to add more pressure to the whole event, he ropes in the entire family. Trying to arrange everything with the family to travel from everywhere to go to the airport on that day, on that time, it was a very, very big deal. With Eleanor completely oblivious to his plans, he tells the love of his life that her parents are meeting them off the plane to take them both out for a meal. He also uses some acting skills. Travelling back from Paris was a little bit of a nightmare journey because he started telling me that he's got this headache, asking me if I had paracetamol, I didn't really have any. I thought that I should have got an Oscar that day because <laughs> I, uh, I pretended that I had a really bad migraine and just so she doesn't think that I'm feeling uncomfortable or nervous or anything. I'm just thinking, I hope Kira feels better and we can have this meal and enjoy our time with the family. At Leeds Bradford Baggage Hall, the enormity of his plans suddenly hit home. When we got to the airport and got our luggage, that's when it hit me. I'm like, oh my God, I'm actually doing this right now. I was only expecting to see my mum and dad. Eleanor's father slips his potential son-in-law the engagement ring. And that's the cue for a very special flash mob to begin. As Kiri, Eleanor, her parents, and the rest of arrivals watch, the flash mob breaks out into dance. But there's one familiar face in the group. When I saw my sister dancing, I was thinking, what is going on? So many things were running through my mind. I was thinking, is he going to propose to me? And then I was thinking, no, stop thinking that. You're going to disappoint yourself if he doesn't. But Eleanor's right, and Kiri's big moment is here. I turned around and all his family just appeared, holding the sign up of him asking me to marry him. Grandma was there as well. Oh, I was so overwhelming just seeing everyone. With family, friends and the rest of Leeds Bradford Airport watching on, Kiri pops the question. It was definitely a very risky approach to doing a proposal. I don't think I even answered, I just nodded. It was happy, it was excitement. My emotions just got to me and I think I just like burst into tears, but it was tears of joy, of course. <laughs> I was surprised that he managed to keep 
Such a secret. It was very difficult trying to keep it from her. The fact that everyone in the house knew about it and Eleanor didn't, it was so, so difficult. I never thought that he'd be able to just lie so many times. <laughs> I mean, he's a great liar, but he knows that I loved every minute of it. It is my perfect proposal. I literally felt like I was in the middle of a movie. Surprises can be nice, but on a plane, they can be a little scary. A flight from Minneapolis to Las Vegas has just taken an unexpected turn. That's our pilot. He just got locked out. The pilot needed the toilet. But when he returned to the cockpit, he found the door had jammed. He's now stuck in the cabin, experiencing the flight from the wrong side of the door. The first officer has to land the plane, which he does successfully. On a flight from Montgomery to Atlanta, Georgia, this flight attendant has decided to deliver the safety demonstration via the medium of rap. The unique delivery makes this one safety demonstration that the passengers might just remember. Even pilots have a sense of humour, although the material can be more dad joke than comedy store. Welcome aboard. Your flight is service direct to the beautiful sunny island of Palma de Mallorca. This is an internal flight in the UK. Oh, sorry. No, my fault. I got the wrong day again. That's tomorrow. This evening. Wait for it. It's even more exciting. We are going to Exeter, where it's beautifully sunny. The temperature's 28 degrees, calm winds, and everyone's down the beach having a barbecue. Oh, no, sorry, that's tomorrow as well. He soon turns his attention to his first officer. He's had a long and distinguished career with the Royal Air Force, spanning some decade or more, but uh, luckily for us, he got rather bored of being a chef and has decided to take up flying. <laughs> Before finishing on his cabin crew. We pride ourselves in employing some of the very finest cabin crew this industry have to offer. I'm sorry to say they're all on annual leave. <laughs> hey, look at the camera. You treat us like animals, hey. You treat this is the like gate animals. at Miami Airport. You saw walking inside, closing the gate. A group of passengers like watch their flight depart. We're sitting here for three hours, man. We're sitting here for And three then hours. vent their anger at staff. You close the flight before I, I get inside. Hen Harass and Ohad Angel have flown from Boston to Miami for a business meeting. They're on a day return trip. Me and my colleague just came there for a few hours, so it was like getting in and out the same day without even a suitcase. It's better for us to take the same day flight, finish our business there, not to sleep over or something. The meeting went well. We finished early than expected, so we arrived to Miami airport three hours before the flight. Early for their return flight, the guys head to the gate to wait for it to open. Also waiting there are several passengers who were on standby for the oversubscribed flight. When the gate opens, Hen and Ohad take a seat and wait until their flight begins to board. They hear no announcements for their flight, but unknown to them, their plane is leaving without them. I never thought that something like that gonna happen to me and they are gonna just in my face close the gate, disappear and start to fly. We saw the plane leaving, we were waiting for them. We were very nervous. And 20 minutes later, the doors open. You see the same staff getting outside and uh, they start blaming you that you weren't there on time. You know, her, like half an hour ago, she told me to so come you here. Sir, you know something right now, the whole situation is that you're here. There's no more flight. This is the, 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 the point. So it's not like a, you're here and then you're supposed to be there. The point is that you miss your flight. Yes. I couldn't believe that they're gonna close the gate on my face and lie to me and tell me that 
Okay, you, you missed your flight. I missed my flight? Well, you closed the flight before I, I get inside. I, your flight, yeah. I didn't miss the flight. Without you. We're well, here for three you, hours. What, what are you talking about close, guy? What do you think? We, we missed our flight. Right? They blamed us. They, they blamed all of us. Maybe now he's going to tell us that we're not here for three hours now, we're sitting here. All the people there were standing no, in no, line yeah, to get on board that, that flight. Hen and Ohad explained that they were sitting at the gate waiting to board, but staff at the gate are determined to prove them wrong. They took the tickets and said, I called you, you wasn't here. Look at this, I assigned your seat I don't know what happened. a long time ago. Look at your seat. Really long time ago, when yeah. I went and on I the line. And I you, and I paid your name, and you were not here. So, I so gate staff claimed to have paged Hen and Ohad before reassigning their seats to passengers on standby. They smile in our face and say, ah, you wasn't here. We are sitting here for three hours, man. We are sitting here for three hours. It really happened. So I, I was in, in shock. The staff claimed to have called the passengers, but the eight now waiting at the gate didn't hear any announcement. Do you guys make some final announcements? Nope. No. Nothing. Nothing. We were sitting here eating pizza for three hours eating pizza. Nobody call us. So the guys escalate their complaint in a bid to avoid sleeping on the airport floor. One of the people tell me you can go to sleep on the bench. I'm not accept something like that. I'm not going to sleep on a bench. The passengers in Miami are angry at being bumped off their flight and the lack of information available. But sometimes, too much information is a bad thing, especially when it becomes gossip. And like everyone, cabin crew like a good gossip. Galley FM is something that all cabin crew know about. It's gossip. So behind those curtains, we'd find out what's gone on in the office, who's been sacked, who's been cheated on. There's a real like camaraderie between the, the crew, and you're going to get a hug, a cup of tea, and a Mars bar. Many moons ago, I was sat in the back galley, and I'd not long been with a partner. So I was filling them in on what we got up to while we were away, and as the passengers were then disembarking, a little old lady took me to one side and said, can I just say, I absolutely loved hearing your story and she then proceeded to tell me about how it reminded her of her and her husband when they used to go on their little trips away to Margate. She then proceeded to tell me that it was here where she believed that she conceived her third child, however she couldn't be sure because she was also having an affair with the butcher and to this day she still doesn't know. And then she got off the aircraft, happy as Larry. We're back with our travel specialists, casting their expert eyes over the weird and wonderful world of flying, caught on camera. Airports can often find themselves the focal point of people's irie, and there are many things to protest about. Frankfurt Airport, Germany, and people are getting noisy. This is one of the anti-noise protests, and this is actually a regular occurrence at Frankfurt Airport. They're used to it, but we've got a lot of people taking part in this protest. The train of people goes on for a really long time. It's quite impressive, actually, seeing what they managed to achieve. But what we have to remember is that for as long as these people are protesting, that presents a security challenge. Where is their attention being directed? On the protest, rather than on trying to observe unusual behavior. It's going to be very difficult to do that if you've got this type of distraction taking place. At Los Angeles Airport, USA, Tensions are running high as thousands take over the terminal building. And you can see the sheer scale of this with the numbers of people that have arrived at the airport to protest against the Trump travel ban. It's quite a large crowd and it will probably be a bit disruptive to the people that are traveling that day. You've got a major security incident on your hand. While the protests may not disrupt any government policies, this will definitely affect the day-to-day -day operation of the airport. Jakarta, Indonesia, 
The flight to the island of Bali has been cancelled and one man wants to organise a sit-in. He's trying to persuade all the other passengers that they should occupy the plane. It turns out that the airport that they're flying to is already closed, so the plane is never going to be able to go. But he decides he'd rather be on the plane and occupy it where he's got a bit of a hold over the airline. This passenger is legitimately holding court on this aircraft with a very captive audience because they can't go anywhere. No aircraft is going to take off simply because a passenger demanded that it departs. And once his impassioned speech is over, everyone duly gets off. Listen, you cannot tell to everybody here on the line that we missed the flight. Hen and Ohad are stranded. Their flight to Boston has taken off without them. And airline staff at the gate are blaming them for missing it. You know something right now, the whole situation is that you're here. There's no more flight. So the flight is full now. But the men believe the gate closed without any final call. We told them we were standing there on time. They said, you lost your flight. You weren't here on time. I... No, it's full. Of course the flight is full. Like, if all of us here saw the city is empty? No, the flight is full. It's booked. It's booked. And we, we, we wasn't they gave your seat to someone else. As a group standing there, the situation wasn't nice. I thought, like, for sure it's some mistake. They're gonna come back or, or tell me, listen, we had the confused, we're gonna go to now to another flight. But unfortunately for Helen Ohad, this isn't the case. And they're now left wondering how they'll get home. So what are we gonna do with us now? But the gate staff aren't forthcoming with an answer, which frustrates Helen Ohad even more. What do you want me to do right now? Why didn't let us know even that you closed the flight? I felt that they aren't listening to what we have to say. What do you want me to do? I don't have anything with me. I can't the gate staff seem to ignore Hen's complaints. But soon, a manager appears. To sleep on the floor now? We try to get answer from the supervisor. Look at the camera. You treat us like animals. Hey, you treat us like animals. America but he just Airlines. left. He didn't answer us. Nothing left us there. We are sitting here for three hours. You treat us like animals, walking. But the manager isn't hanging around. So the men decide to visit the customer service desk. Took them a while and they got us like tickets for the next day. And when we asked them, what do you want us to do now? We, we, we don't have like our bags. We don't have anything here. One of the people tell me, you can go to sleep on the bench. And I'm not accept something like that. I'm not going to sleep on a bench. And one of them offered that we're going to sleep as a group in the cathedral. They decide to ignore the airline's accommodation advice and book into a hotel for the night at their own expense. Once back home, Hen and Ohad made a formal complaint to American Airlines. The official answer from the airline was that we lost the flight because we late. They are sticking with their version, not even willing to, to hear the other side. You treat us like animals, walking. It was really, really bad experience. I can tell you that I will never go to fly with them again. Never. Sometimes, the things passengers witness when flying can leave you open-mouthed. Boarding has been smooth, but what happens when this passenger takes his seat is a little unnerving. A flight from Amsterdam to Berlin is about to take off. The engineer just needs to make a quick fix to the engine. The flight went without incident, and the airline claims the use of high-speed metallic tape didn't compromise the safety of the aircraft. Once the aircraft is moving, there's very little anyone can do if a bird and engine come together, especially on takeoff. The engine was shut down, the takeoff aborted, and the plane taken out of service. We've seen proposals, pat downs, and protests. With air travel on the rise, more passengers mean more problems. And more problems can lead to more people going crazy on a plane. Oh